Welcome to Reflections from the Heart, presented by Stewardship, a Mission of Faith. Reflections from the Heart is an outreach of Gospel Reflection, a family ministry of Stewardship, a Mission of Faith. For the next 30 minutes, please join us as we break open the bread of life in the Gospel reading for this Sunday's Mass, as we invite the same Holy Spirit who inspired the biblical writers to inspire us today. And now, here is your host with Reflections from the Heart. Welcome, everyone, to another session of Reflections from the Heart. My name is David Abel, and I'm joined by Cameron Norris. Hello, Cameron. Hello, Welcome. Hello, David. Thank you so much. Awesome, awesome. It's an amazing day. If everybody would take a moment and get their Bibles, we're going to turn to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, verses 5 through 10. But before we break open the bread of life, Cameron, do you mind inviting the Holy Spirit in so that we're able to see what we're to see, hear what we're to hear, and then put it into action? I would love to. Father, we invite you into this conversation. We invite you into this room, into our hearts to be with us. As we open up your word that is alive and active, we ask that it would become alive and active to us here right now that we'll, we will see what you want to show us, we'll hear what you want us to hear. Holy Spirit, illuminate your word in our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. In the Father, and the Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. So again, once again, it comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, verses 5 through 10. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you would say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your servant, who has just come in from plowing and tending sheep in the field, come here immediately and take your place at table? Would he not rather say to him, prepare something for me to eat, put on your apron and wait on me while I eat and drink? You may eat and drink when I am finished. Is he grateful to that servant because he did what was commanded? So should it be with you. When you have done all you have been commanded, say, we are unprofitable servants. We have done what we were obliged to do. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Wow. So the apostles start off here giving the Lord kind of a command. Increase our faith. Do, do this. But isn't, the, isn't that the kindness of God to not respond with, don't tell me what to do? He responds with, if you have faith, that's even a tiniest little bit of an amount. I, I, I think that's like the Lord giving an invitation into kindness. Like, I, I don't really like it when people are bossing me around with the idea of, hey, do this for me. But here's how it starts. The apostle, the apostles say to the Lord, do this, increase our faith. And still his heart flows with kindness. He doesn't say, first of all, you need to stop talking and listen. He says, hey, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed. So I think really what he's trying to say is, if you, it's almost like you could see him pointing to a person. If you have a little bit of faith, what are you doing with it? And I think that's, we, we get to examine our own hearts with the introspection of the Holy Spirit. Lord, what are the things that you've given me? What are the, show me where I can grow in my faith. And oftentimes it starts small. He, I mean, he might, he might ask you to do something insignificant, something that is out of the spotlight, something that nobody will ever know about it. And hopefully you don't tell him because it's going to be something between you and the Lord. And he, he will use those moments to go from a little bit to just a little bit more, to just a little bit more. But then what happens when you go to the gym one day, you come home, you're not in the best physical shape you ever are, but you go to the gym every day for 10 years, you can almost point those people out. In the same way, he wants to have that relationship with us, with the gift of faith. What did you do today? Okay, well, that doesn't mean tomorrow just veg out. Go to it again. Take it to the Lord again. Lord, uh, and, and are there some days where you might miss the gym? Are there some days where you might miss that time? That's fine, but don't, don't let it be a, 
a routine or a habit, get into the right routines, get into the right habits. Yeah. Amazing. And, and, you know, as I was reading this, I always get confused because it's like, wow, you know, I must not have faith the size of a mustard seed because I've never said to a mulberry bush, get up, unroot yourself and go plant yourself in the sea. And it obeyed me. (laughs) But I think what the Lord really just opened up to me is this, that would be a miracle if the mulberry bush did that. But you see, with faith, miracles happen every day. Do we have eyes to see, ears to hear? My friend, who was a gospel reflection with us last week, he ended up on Friday at breakfast with his friends. He's a pastor. The electric pulse to his heart that tells it to beat stopped. He coded. He died. They shocked him. So through the grace of God, one of the waitresses was a nurse. She kept compression and kept his heart beating. Through the grace of God, another miracle, the ambulance was only three minutes away, got there, hit him with the paddles five times, put him in the ambulance. He actually woke up in the ambulance. Through the grace of God, that same man, that pastor who last Friday died, and through a miracle, a miracle, and a miracle of God, ended up having a pacemaker put in and everything, he was a gospel reflection this week. Amazing. Impossible. Yeah. But see, that's a miracle. Yeah. We have these miracles happen every day. Do we have hearts of gratitude to say, thank you, God? Do we have the eyes of faith to see them, to hear it, and to acknowledge God in them? Do we thank God every day for the gift of faith? Faith is not something you have. Faith is a gift got from God to us. That we're, It's a sacred trust. It comes from the book of Ephesians. It's a sacred trust given to us. And then that faith with the size of a mustard seed, which is a gift from God in every human heart, it grows. And that mustard tree grows and its branches spread. That's what our faith does. So, man, Lord, increase my faith. And the Lord said, no problem, David, I will. I'm going to give you more opportunity to be faithful. Yeah. I'm going to give you more opportunity to trust in me. Mm -hmm. It's not that he's a genie in a bottle. It's not that he just goes, clicks his fingers and we're good to go. I've got more faith. Oh, no, 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 no. Right. He wants to stretch our hearts, stretch our, our minds to see the miracles, acknowledge him in all things so that that faith within us truly does grow. Yeah. It, it, it reminds me, I'm not a theologian, but I remember studying about faith, just seeing it so many different times and something that I'm sure there's different studies out there or Bible studies or things that speak to this, but there's faith in God. And there's also times where it says the faith of God. Like the idea is you get to partner with what he knows, what he understands, what he's doing. And a good read would be Hebrews 11. It talks about faith. It starts, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things that you can't see or that are unseen. And then it goes through examples of the heroes of the faith, Abraham or even um, Cain, uh, Abel, when he brought his offering, or Noah, or Enoch. And and part of the idea is we weren't there the day that a tree grew or the seed was planted. Maybe that happened 100 years ago, but we get to see the tree today and know that that happened. It, it must have been a seed that went into this ground and got watered, and over time went from small to bigger to big, and now I'm looking at this tree that's 200 years old, the idea, that's faith. Faith is, this didn't just appear here, that it happened this way. Or the way that light was created was, God said, let there be light. Like, the idea, we didn't see that happen, but I know that it happened. And those are small seeds of faith that we have in us. Absolutely. And I think, back to your first sentence that you looked at, when the apostles ordered the Lord, or ask, but almost ordered, increase our faith, I put on down a little ditty. Do we serve God or does God serve us? And I really think that's a matter of the heart to take to prayer because for me, I'm a servant of the Lord. I'm to do all things all the days of my life to bring him honor, glory, and praise, to build the kingdom of heaven. I'm all in. Lord, use me for your purpose. The day that I think that he serves me, that he's my genie in a bottle, that he just does what I want him to do, that's the day spiritual pride has crept into my heart, and it's a danger. So I think that's really what the parable is all about. 
You know, it's like, you know, if you think you've been working in the fields all day and you've done all these good things and you're good to go, don't do that. Don't do that. We're here. There's no retirement in the Bible. And I think that's another part of this verse is we're here to serve the Lord, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit visit the sick, you know what I mean? Care for the poor. That is our yes put in action. That is love lived out in our life. That is the word made flesh in fleshing sacred scripture through these works, these carnal work, these works of mercy. So for me, man, Lord, every day, use me for your purpose. I'm here to serve you. You're not here to serve me. So for me, that's my challenge and my growth today. That's good. And that's what the verse right here says, put on your apron, wait on me while I eat and drink. You may eat and drink when I'm finished. This idea in his kingdom the focus is to serve others first. Mm-hmm. It's it's less of it's it's not that yourself doesn't matter. Of course it does. Uh, you're a precious son or daughter of the Most High God, but you think of yourself a little bit less when you're thinking of others first. You don't walk into a room with the attitude, "What can I get out of this?" It is you look around the room, Lord, what are the needs? What are the needs of these people? And it might just be. Somebody hasn't been kind to a person in a long time, and the Lord wants to show him kindness. I remember when uh, the Lord opened up to me about, <clears throat> so being a dad, I didn't necessarily have like a good dad in my home, and I remember just praying about different things and like kind of who you want to model to be after, and I remember him showing me, I put that person in your life so that you would learn kindness. I put that person in your life so you would learn humbleness. I put this person into your life so you would learn what uh, unconditional love is. I put this person in your life. Right. It's just all these things. And I, I mean, it was like, whoa, he was there that whole time. He knew what I needed. But then it, it also just gave me an appreciation for those people were obedient. Mm-hmm. That guy didn't have to do that thing that he did. But the Lord was working through him. He was obedient, and it made a profound effect on my life to the fact that the Lord brought it up again at this, like, crucial time. You know, we're having our first kid, and you're wondering, oh, man, am I going to be a good dad? I don't know what, what I'm doing. I don't, you know. And he's like, I, I prepared you for this. You didn't even know because I had you go to this class at this school and meet this kid and then you would bump into him here and his dad would do this thing for you. That's how I showed you how to be a humble servant. You didn't know, but I orchestrated the whole thing. And it was like, whoa. Okay. So as we're walking through today, tomorrow, the Lord has his hand at work. He knows what people need, but it's also part of our responsibility is when I walk into a room, Lord, is there anybody? Is there somebody that needs some encouragement today? Is there somebody that just needs a smile? Is there somebody they don't they they want to be heard? How often do we run into people that want to be heard? Yeah. And we sit down, we close our mouth, and we open up our ears, and we lock eyes with them, and we'd say, "Hey, you got something on your chest? I want to listen to you." We get to be that, yeah. and sometimes we need that, but. You don't want a relationship to be a one-way street. You don't want the bank account to only have withdrawals come out of it. Um, yeah, so that's, I think, uh, serving others first. Absolutely. And, you know, as I look at faith, realizing it's a gift, do I wake up in the morning and do I thank God <laughs> Good for question. the gift of faith? You know, I challenge myself. I, I don't. I thank you for a lot of things, but never, I, I don't remember ever thanking him for faith. So I want to make sure I add that to my prayer list in the, morning, in the morning because we need to have this heart of gratitude. We take things for granted. We do. We we take God for granted. We feel like we're entitled. None of that is healthy because that's the opening for spiritual pride to grow. So for me, I want to wake up with a heart of gratitude. I want to take that first fruit of the day, that first hour, hour and a half, two hours. I want to give it to the Lord. And when I do that, I am so productive, fruitful that day. When I don't, when I'm too busy, when I got to zoom out the door, it's not a healthy day for me. I'm off kilter. And my wife especially can tell when uh, (laughs) David hasn't given that first fruit to the Lord, but zoomed out ahead of the Lord. So... Slow down. It's beautiful to be able to slow down and let the Lord 
work in you, with you, and through you. But having that heart of gratitude, thank you, Lord, for the gift of my faith. Thank you. Don't take it for granted. It is a sacred trust. Now, when we say our yes, that's a call to action. To be God's messengers of love in this world, his mercy, his compassion, man, Lord. And everything we go through, as you shared, Cameron, is put the mirror up. What do you want to teach me, Lord? Yes. What do you want to refine in me? And what I've learned is, is, is saying to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, please shine your light on my soul and reveal to me the sins that I cannot see and then help me to make a good confession. When you do that, before you go to the sacrament of reconciliation, the sacrament of confession, oh my goodness, you will be amazed at what the Holy Spirit reveals. And you're like, I never saw that. You're right. Self-sufficiency. I didn't ask God's help. I got it figured out. I didn't see that one. I didn't see where I was prideful. Oh, I didn't see that. I'm holding unforgiveness. I'm telling you what, make that prayer every morning or every evening. Make that prayer before you go to the sacrament of reconciliation. Ask the Holy Spirit to illuminate for you the sins you carry in your soul that you can't see. And wow, get them out into the light. Get them forgiven. Let God dust you off and then get back in the game. That's awesome. I'm I'm thinking about a story. So we have a mutual friend. I don't think I've talked about this with you, but he came up to me just recently and said, you and David, you guys talk about things like, you know, you're in a situation and the Lord's guiding you or the Lord's saying this or the Lord's saying that. He's like, I, I keep listening, but I don't, I, you know, I don't hear his audible voice. And it was like, okay, hold on, slow down. But I'm thinking of the story, the idea of faith. I remember when uh, just reading through the word of God, the idea that the Lord wants to speak to me, speak to my heart, that he talks to his people, right? We, we serve the same God. He hasn't changed. He speaks to his people. So I remember just like, okay, I'm going after this thing. And, you know, n- not not that it was anything that I could do, but it was the idea of, Lord, you, here's my heart. And I thought, you know, by the end of the day or the week, it would be like, you know, j- just this on fire. Cr- and, and it's, He'd answer the phone and we'd have a conversation. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know what I thought. I, you know, I'm going to be talking to the president by the end of the week or something, and he's going to need my advice. I, I don't... I, I'm exaggerating by a big portion. But anyway, it was the idea of like, Lord, if you want to speak to me, what is it going to be about? You don't know what it's going to be about. And I remember it was so clear at the very beginning, just this intentional idea of, Lord, my heart's yours. If you can use me, I'm yours. And it was tiny, servant, nobody will ever see things, like cleaning up some trash that there's a dumpster in town that always overflows. It's like, I, I didn't hear the next thing until the first thing. And it, but, it, but it wasn't a thought that, it, it wasn't like a thought that could, I could have come up with. It was like this, I want to show you something, and I want you to do something about it. And I'm telling you, this idea of the faith the size of a mustard seed, it was like, okay, Lord, I have faith that you're showing me that, but... I mean, come on, I just told you, like, I'm all in, I'm yours. Don't you want me to change the world by the end of the month or something? And it, he, His kindness was, hey, we're going to build a relationship here. I need a heart that I can trust. And I don't really want you speaking into other people's lives if you're not willing to clean up the trash in your hometown. That it, It's a concern of mine, and I can't get anybody to do it. It's like, okay, I'll do that. And then it's funny, over time, then just the next thing, you know, something as simple as a person comes to mind, and then you're driving by and you see that person. It's like, well, what do you want me to do there? It's like, oh, just tell her she's a real good mom. She needs to hear that. She hasn't heard it in a while. All right, but, you know, I only have a little bit of time. And it's like, do you want me to talk to you? Do you want me to trust you with some things or not? Like you're you're having these heart-to-heart moments on your knees in your quiet space with me. And here I am. And it's like, okay, you know, you turn the car yeah. around and then you talk to the person. It's like, I can't believe this. Like, whoa. You know, and you don't have to get into this long explanation nope. of, you know, I'm, I'm on this journey and God, it's just, hey, I can't believe I ran into you. I was just thinking about you. Like, yeah. 
you're such a great mom. I always love seeing you with your kids. And I'm telling you, it, 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 the confirmation that that was the voice of the Lord, but, but it's those little things. It's the things that it's not in the spotlight. It's not in the, hey, let's get the news here to, nope. to see how great we are because it's really not about us. It's uh-huh. he has some things to do. And, and I really believe this idea of if you have faith the side of a mustard seed, in that area that I'm talking about, it really was maybe just a half a mustard seed at the beginning. Like, I think he told me to pick up the trash. But then after you do that, the next time, it's almost like you know what part of you that that feeling of his voice, of what he's speaking to you, where it comes from. But he wants to build that over time. Yeah. He doesn't want to, hey, check your email every morning. This is what God wants you to do. No, he wants he wants to spend some time with you. He wants to be invited along on this great adventure he created with us. And when we invite the Father along, oh my goodness, it's awesome. Hunting, fishing, invite him along. Yeah. From the bedroom to the boardroom. God wants to be a part of every part of our life. You know, when you said about the still quiet voice of the Lord, I can promise you what I've come to learn. Number one, never heard an audible voice ever. Yep. But what I learned is when I hear the Lord's voice, it always emanates from my heart. Don't know how to describe it, but it's it comes from my heart. It's always grounded and centered in love. It's always grounded and centered in others, not myself. And so learning that spiritual discernment of the voices, because if it's in my head, oh, it can be in either ear. The enemy's always trying to, to get me. But when it emanates from my heart and it's always about something others centered and it's it's always grounded in love, then I know it's the Father's voice. And he does love me. His pet name for me is Knucklehead. He tells me that's a term of endearment because I always say no at least three times. And I, I remember a funny story. I was going to go speak to about a thousand men at a conference, and I had my sports jacket or my jack, sports jacket hanging on the back of the chair. And I hear the still quiet voice of the Lord. You better put that on. You're going to forget it. I said, oh, "This is me now. You have to understand." <laughs> Immediately, David. No, I'm not going to forget. It. It's right there. It's right there. I'm getting ready. To, I'm going to leave in two minutes. It's right there. I'm gonna, I'm, I won't forget it. That's what I said. Next thing you know, I'm driving. Now I'm almost in Harrisburg. And I realize <laughs> I forgot my sports jacket. And I went, oh, my goodness. Wow. You see those little promptings when God wants to reveal himself to us and his little nudges? Mm-hmm. He wants us to follow through on them because yeah. reality is he's, he wants it done for a reason. Yeah. So that learning lesson for me was when you hear that still quiet voice, be obedient. Do that, you know, what what's being you're being prompted to do. Right. Because God has a plan for that. So right. it was it was a it was a funny thing. And I actually started the conference talk with that story of wow. Knucklehead David Abel and not <laughs> listening and and telling the Lord, I'm, there's no way I'm gonna forget it. It's right there. Yeah. And I did. Wow. And that remind as you're sharing the end of that, it reminds me of yesterday, the idea of like being obedient. So we have three young kids. Our oldest is eight. Our youngest is five, and they're playing with the neighbors. It was a nice afternoon yesterday and uh, waiting on uh, mom to get home. So we were just out in the yard and playing. And then I was getting some things ready to cut the grass and, you know, between dinner, just everything going on, I came out to the neighbor and I said, hey, I see two of our kids. Have you seen Caroline? She said, no, she's not over here. And then for whatever reason, I said, well, she's not one I have to worry about. How do I know that? Because I have a history with her. I have asked her to be obedient, and I've seen her obey in the area of, I I don't have to worry about her running to another friend's house or somebody, you know, somebody else in the neighborhood. She's either, she's here, you know, she's probably in the house or I'll find her. But like, how did I know how to say, ah, I don't have to, I don't have to put that in the category of, uh uh-oh, I better hurry up and find her because I trust her. Why do I trust her? Because day in and day out, I know that she knows we have some boundaries, we have some parameters, we have some rules, and she doesn't mess around with that. She can be trusted. And I think in the same way that story happened yesterday, what are we being obedient with? So. Yeah. I think the scripture verse also tells us, you know, you can't work your way into heaven. You can't do enough stuff. You know, you're out plowing, you're tending the sheep, you're in the field, you come in, 
And there's no retirement. It's not over. The Lord's saying, well, there's there's more to do. Mm. Because at the end of the day, and I love this story of, of Rick Warren when I was with him in Philadelphia, he was sharing about his father when he was on his deathbed in his final moments of his life. His father's final words to Pastor Rick Warren were, one more soul for Jesus. His whole life was about one more soul for Jesus. And that impacted me. I'll never forget it. So my life's journey, and I'm encouraging all of our listeners to make it about one more soul for Jesus. God wants to use us as an instrument in the salvation of souls, co-missioned, co-joined with the mission of Christ in the salvation of all souls. How does God want to use you today to be that vessel of his mercy, love, compassion, truth? Man, when you say you're yes, it is a great adventure. Yeah, it's so good. And, and as you're sharing, it reminds me, there's a there's a pastor, Bill Johnson, in California, Bethel Church. He shared this, this story about when he came home from work, so like came home from the office, he would always get out of his car and take a breath and say, okay, now you're, now you're, you got to show up here too. Like this is more important than what you were just doing. And I just love that attitude of, Walking into the house, this is, yes, it's a place to rest and relax, but it's like us as dads, let's walk in that front door, like ready to go. Like, let's bring something to it uh, intentionally. And it's beautiful. So ladies and gentlemen, as we understand the scripture verse, you know, Lord, increase my faith. Give me more opportunities to be faithful. That means give me more opportunities to trust you that you got it. I can't fix it. I can't make it happen. That your God and all things are possible in you, with you, and through you. God bless each and every one of you. Let's get out there and change this world. Reflections from the Heart has been presented by Stewardship, a mission of faith. We hope that you've been blessed and encouraged as you listen to Reflections from the Heart. If so, please consider participating in a Gospel Reflection Group. For more information on locations and times of Gospel Reflection Groups, or how to start a Gospel Reflection Group in your area, and to learn about all of the family of ministries, please visit our website at stewardshipmission.org or call us at 717-367-0100. Stewardship, a mission of faith, is a 501c3 nonprofit organization and depends on donations from people like you to make Reflections from the Heart possible. If you've enjoyed this broadcast, please prayerfully consider partnering with us by making a tax-deductible donation by visiting stewardshipmission.org or call us at 717-367-0100. On behalf of all of us at Stewardship, a mission of faith, thank you for listening. And until next time, may God bless, protect, and guide you on your journey home to Him.